Hello, everyone. I know that understanding native speakers, especially when they speak quickly, is something that's very important to you. So today I want to share with you two things you can do, two things you can actively practice so that understanding people when they speak English quickly will become a little easier for you. You might hear Espy coughing over here. She suddenly got a bit of a cough a minute ago. So she's sitting here next to me <laughs> coughing. Um, so understanding people when they speak fast can be very difficult in any language that we're learning. Um, and it is easier said than done. This is a phrase that means it's easy to talk about how you can do this, but doing it is a little more difficult. So let me write that phrase in here for you. Easier said than done. Yes. We can use this phrase in lots of different, um, with lots of different topics, I should say. Um, golfing is easier. No, that would be wrong. <laughs> Saying, telling someone how to golf, it's easier said than done but for me. Maybe you're a golfer. It's easy for you to golf and you could tell me how, but I might say it's easier said than done because I can say it. I can tell you what I'm supposed to do. It's more difficult to do it. So welcome to another 10 to 20 with Tanya. I'm Tanya. And today I'm going to tell you two things, maybe even three things you can do, depends on how much time we have, um, to make this easier. The first thing I want to share with you is connected speech. So I'm going to write that in the chat here, connected speech. And if you're watching and you don't see the chat and you're live, it should be on the side of your image. If you are, uh, if you make your image a little smaller than your computer, um, if you are watching the recording, you can still find it by making the video image smaller on your computer and then it will show up on the side and the other comments are on the bottom of the recording. SV is doing her little thing when she wants something. See how she does her pause like this when she wants something. Uh, anybody have a guess what I'm giving her for a treat? Do you want to guess? What am I giving her for a treat? What do you think it is? It is not a dog treat, but it's, it, I'll tell you, it is a human food. It's one of her favorite human foods. So you may have heard me talk about it before. She loves it. It's extremely healthy. No, it's not a biscuit, but that is something we often give dogs for a treat. Okay. So connected speech, what is connected speech? I'll tell you about SB here in a minute. I'll give people a chance to guess. <clears throat> connected speech is what most of us do in our native language. We will connect words together instead of saying next time, for instance, in English, next time, I'll see you next time. Next ends with a T, time starts with a T. So we say next time, next time, as if it is one word. And there are many um, ways that we do this. You can study all the different ways we do this, if that's something you enjoy doing. Um, but today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you can do that more organically, the way you learned it in your native language, the way I learned it as a child. Um, so I'm going to look at the what the guesses are here. A biscuit. Is it a peanut? It could be, but she I don't give her peanuts. Let me see. Is it a fruit? That's a good question. It is not a fruit. I'll give you a hint. It's a vegetable. SB loves this particular vegetable. And so, and I got a lot of it recently, so I'm sharing it with her. She likes it raw, meaning uncooked. And she also likes it cooked both ways. She loves it. And she will do that little thing because she wants me to give it to her. Lie down and I'll give you more. Stay. Okay. So I am going to give you some phrases for us to 
practice connected speech together so you can learn how to do it. Um, Mehmet says, is it a cashew nut? Uh, no, it's not a nut. It's not carrots. Yes, a lot of dogs like carrots. She's not a big carrot fan, which means she doesn't love them. Uh, Martine says courgette. I'm trying to think if that is because we don't say courgette in American English. I think I'm trying to think of which English country says that, but I don't think this is courgette. It's not celery. I'm going to give her a little more and then I'm going to tell you the second thing. And then I'm going to tell you more about how to do those things. So the first thing is practicing connected speech. I have other videos on that. I will link them below. But today I'm going to give you some specific phrases you can use and practice today and how you can practice this with other videos, not just my videos. Um, and the second thing is how you listen, what you listen to. So let's talk about that a little bit. If you're having difficulty understanding both native speakers, and let's face it, in most conversations, you will be talking to people who speak English as a second language, no matter where you live, but especially here in the United States, a lot of people who live here speak English as their second language. And so listening to English spoken with different accents is a really good way to help you to be able to understand people when they are speaking quickly, because then you can change back and forth. This is going to help you understand native speakers too. So don't worry that you think, oh, I can't do that because I want to understand the native speakers. No, it's okay. Listen to different accents. The more you listen, the more you will understand. Now, I will say if you are more of a beginner, pick an accent you want to listen to the most. Maybe it's the British accent. Maybe it's an Australian accent. Maybe it's an American accent like I have. Whatever it is, listen to that one most of the time, but include little by little other accents. And as you become intermediate and advanced, include more accents. Okay. Another thing about what you listen to, Espy's dying for another piece of this. She's in the sun. I don't know how you, well you can see this. You're not, as soon as I give the camera on her, she's like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, <clears throat> hey, Jeff. Uh, then what was I saying? Oh, as far as listening, because this is the second thing, you also want to listen to a variety of people, men, women, different ages, um, different accents within the same country. And listen to things that are made for English learners like you're doing right now. And as you become a little more advanced, intermediate to advanced, you want to start listening more to things that are made for native speakers. So for example, I'm currently listening to a book um, on my app on my phone. I listen to this book in Spanish because Spanish is my second language. And I but mostly I listen to Spanish teachers because I'm still learning Spanish and it's <laughs> here she comes and it is um, not my first language. I'm an intermediate student, so I'm becoming more advanced. So I'm listening more to things made for native speakers. So, OK, I'm going to show you what this is. You probably can't tell what it is here. No, it's not cauliflower. It looks a lot like cauliflower. Yes, Mehmet got it. It is broccoli. She loves broccoli. And um, so when I want her to sit here with me and hopefully, 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 please be quiet. I give her some broccoli because it's a very healthy thing for both of us. And so, okay. Let's see. Yes. Louise says she wants to be a part of the class today. She always wants to be a part of the class. And she sometimes has a lot to say. And sometimes she's very loud. Okay, so hopefully you understood what I meant about how you listen. There, Of course, there could be a whole conversation about that. But for now, start doing some of those things that I just suggested that will help you 
to be able to understand people who speak more quickly, no matter where they're from, no matter what their accent, whether they're native speakers or uh, speak English as a second language, either way. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about connected speech because this is what I really want to focus on today. And I want to thank everyone who's joining us. If this is helpful for you, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. So let's start with a phrase. The first phrase we're going to use for connected speech is, don't you think it's a good idea to go? Like in a question form. Don't you think it's a good idea to go? So let me say it enunciate it, I should say, so that I enunciate, pronounce each word correctly. Don't you think it's a good idea to go? So when we're first learning, we're focusing more on the vocabulary and the sentence structure, and we're not looking at how we can connect this as much. But whether you are a beginning intermediate or an intermediate or an advanced student, connected speech is really going to help you at any level. And you can decide for yourself how much you want to practice. One guideline I would give you is if you're getting very frustrated with it, probably you're either forcing yourself too much or you maybe need a little more help with how to do it or it's um, just too uh, complicated and you need to simplify it a little bit. So <laughs> um, let's look at how I would say this sentence with connected speech. Uh, instead of saying, don't you think it's a good idea to go? I would say, don't you think it's a good idea to go? Now notice how it all sounds like it's smashed together. Don't you think it's a good idea to go? Now, I'm going to help you for this with two things. I have a whole series of videos on Instagram. This one is older. And this has, I don't know if you can read this. It has it three different ways. I've spelled out how you could say it, the way it's written, a little faster and a little faster. And I've created these videos so that you can practice with them. I don't get any money if you go to practice with these. This is not an advertisement. This is just something I created to share with you. And SB, do you want to do this? She's like, yes, please. Does it have broccoli? <laughs> okay. So in a minute, I'm going to show you how I would use that video. I'm going to give you the hashtag. It's hashtag speak with Tanya. They are totally free to you if you have an Instagram account. Um, so let me type what I how I said it. I said, don't you think it's a good idea altogether to go? Now I've put it there. Don't you think it's a good idea to go? Don't you think it's a good idea to go? So let's try this one together. Here's the third kind of bonus tip is shadowing. To shadow just means you're going to copy me. I have a lot of videos on shadowing, so I'll put those in the link below as well. Um, I will say it. You just copy me as closely as you can. Don't you think it's a good eye? It's a good idea to go. Notice I don't say to go. I say to go. I don't say don't you. I say don't you. Don't you think you can hear think? Don't you think it's a good idea? It's a good idea. That one is almost all together. It's a good idea. Just say it's a good idea to faster and try to try to don't read it. Try to just maybe close your eyes and copy what I say now. One of the thing, reasons I wanted Espy here, come here, Espy. I'm going to bring her closer. She's like, what, what, what? Come here. Look what I got for you. Come on up here. If, Espy, will you help me with this for a minute? If I told you that her name is Espy, here you go, 
and I didn't write it down for you and you had never heard that name before, you would just say ESPY. You might not think of it like this. Maybe you would. Maybe you would think of it like this. Maybe you would think of it like this. Or maybe you would think of it like this. I'm putting all of these in the chat. In fact, a lot of people call her S, like the letter S, B as in boy. That is not her real name, but she comes to that name. She thinks her name is Espy. It's Espy. The reason I bring this up is when instead of thinking of the word don't you, don't think of it. Think of it as if I just said, here's my dog, don't ya. Don't ya. Don't ya think. I know you can get that part. Don't you think. And then the next part, it's a good idea. To, it's a good idea. To. It is almost like learning a name you've never heard. This is my dog. It's a good idea. To. You'd be like, what? Her name is, it's a good idea. To. <laughs> so watch what I do. Listen to what I am saying. SB says, give me some more broccoli. Give me, give me some more. Give me some more. There's another one. Um, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Don't you think it's a good idea? Go. So think and go. You already have those two words. Don't you? That one might need a little practice. It's a good idea. You might need to practice a little more or maybe you've got it. If you got it, if you feel like you're getting it, give me a thumbs up or say I got it in the uh, comments here. And I'm going to Let's see, see if we have some questions. Can we see that kind of phrase written in a text? Yes, I wrote it in the comments. If you go up, you can see where I wrote it. Let's see, did I write that? I wrote it for sure. Yes, up above under all the thumbs up by M. I wrote it the way it would be written. And then down from there is the hashtag speak with Tanya where you can find this phrase and others on Instagram. And then below there is the way I would maybe say it. Don't you think that, don't you think it's a good idea? It's a good idea is just putting together. It's a, it's a, say that first. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Now there, like I said, you can look up explanations of this if you'd like, but then you're spending a lot of time thinking about explanations. And if you love doing that and it's helping, keep doing that. The reason I don't teach that is because then you're trying to think of that when it's time to speak. And you don't need to memorize this. Just practice. I'm going to give you another one to practice with, and then I'm going to show you how you can practice with this, with these. Um, I think there's about 35 of them here on my Instagram and I keep making them. Okay. The next phrase that I'm going to share with you, did I miss any questions? Can we talk like that with British people? Yeah. They just have a different way to do it. Um, British people do the same thing. You do the same thing in your native language. You're just not aware of it. That's why when people who are learning your native language, try to listen to you. They have a hard time understanding you because you're not saying each word like I am doing it right now. Um, so one of the keys is to listen and practice. Practice by copying. <laughs> Louise says she's hungry. She's not hungry. She just had her lunch, her healthy lunch. She just now wants more broccoli because she thinks it's a treat. It's a treat. We're going to let her think that. Okay. The next phrase. What did you think of that book? What I want you to do now is to um, say this phrase. What did you think of that book? Now just try saying it faster and faster and faster. And then I'm going to tell you, or I'm going to tell you and show you how it might be said. Here's the other thing. Even though there are some rules, I put my fingers like this, rules, because yes, there are some rules, but different people use this differently. Language is an art, and to approach it as a science, 
can be helpful sometimes because there is some science to it, but mostly it's an art, which means we are creative with it. So this phrase, what, what did you think of that book? Now, when we have did with you, like don't you becomes don'tcha, did you becomes didja. What did you think? What did you think of that book? So let me write it here. What did you, did you think of, think of becomes one word, that book. And when we say it faster, we tend to drop that T, even though the next word starts with a B, we say that book. We are still very quietly saying the T. You just can't hear it as well. What, what did you think of that book? So let me say it again and you try to copy me and then I will say it in pieces. What did you think of that book? What did you think of that book? What did you think of that book? Okay, let's say it in pieces. What? You already have what, what did you, this is common, did, did you often becomes did you, what did you think of, think of, or think of, think of, where the K connects with the of, think of, think of, what did you think of that book? Instead of saying that book, we just make the T a lot softer and say that book. What did you think of that book? Now try it a little faster. What did you think of that book? I typed it in the chat if you're looking for where I typed it. What did you think of that book? This one is also on my Instagram. All right. And... One more, and then I'm going to make sure I've answered some questions. I see a couple questions here. Is it J, the sound of you? Yes. We often make the sound U into CH or J. Like instead of don't you, we say don't CH. And instead of did you, we say did J. Did J. You're absolutely right. The next question is, is it right to, to write fast like to speak? Is it right to write fast like? We don't write it the way. If the question, I think the question is, do we write it um, the way I'm writing it here? No, we do not write it the way I'm writing it here. That is, I'm doing that hoping it is helpful. If it's not helpful, don't look at it. Okay, the next sentence. Did you know that... I went to the party last night. Did you know that I went to the party last night? Copy it with me. Say what I say. Did you know that I went to the party last night? You're asking your friend. Now just practice saying it a few times while you're listening to me talk and speed it up. Say it as fast as you can at your level. And then while I take a drink of water or tea, iced tea here, you can practice. And someone asked if this broccoli is boiled. No, this is raw broccoli. She does like boiled broccoli. And she's now sitting over on this side with her head on the table like this. Because she wants more broccoli, huh? Even though there are bacon, bacon treats here. She loves broccoli. Okay, so let me tell you how I would say that one. Did you know that I went to the party last night? Did you? Remember, did you? Did you know? Did you know that I went to the party last night? Let me write it out for you. Did you? Try that part first. Did you know that I... You can hear it. The... the um, T becomes soft, that I went to, went to, again, those two T's come together. This is really common. This is one of the rules, if you will. Went to, and went to becomes winter, winter, or winter. 
or went to. Um, the party. And then last night, it's common to say last night. It's as if you cannot hear the T. Well, maybe you can't hear the T, but you can feel it in your mouth. Last night and you're starting to say the T, you can feel that T, but then you don't make the sound and you just say night. I'm gonna say the whole thing again and then I will break it down for you. Did you know that I went to the party last night? Oh, I said I was gonna say the whole thing, error. Did you know that I went to the party last night? Did you know that I went to the party last night? Now, let me break that down for you. Did you? Did you know? Notice those go together. Did you know? And you can even hear it in the tone and the way I am making my inflection. Did you know? Did you know that I, that I, did you know that I went to the party? Went to the party? Did you know that I went to the party last night? Last night. Did you know I went to the party last night? So you can use almost any video, for sure videos that are made for native speakers, especially where people are having conversation. If somebody is giving a speech or something, they will speak a little more formally and not use as much um, connected speech. Naturally, they will naturally do that. Um, but let me, I told you I would show you about this video. So if you go to Instagram, um, and you put in hashtag speak with Tanya. And again, I'm not getting paid for this. This is just something I made on Instagram. It's free for you. I'm hoping that it's helpful. When you go there, you will just see two videos actually. And you have to click on where it says, it's hard to see this, reels. And then you'll see a lot more videos show up. And the one I shared with you today did you, th is it, so you can see again that it's written here. And if you listen, you can hear me say it. Don't you think so, it's a good idea to go? Don't you think it is a good idea to go? And then if you touch the video and hold, it takes some practice sometimes. You can look at that because the only things I say on this video are the phrase, are the phrases, it's the same phrase, is the phrase in three different ways. So on this one, I can see it says, don't you think it's a good idea to go, which is the first phrase I gave you today. So I can listen to it and then I can say it. Don't you think it's a good idea to go? Now I'm going to turn this up so you can see me do what I would suggest you do. So here's the next one. Don't you think it's a good idea to go? Don't you think it's a good idea to go? I'm copying what I said. Don't you think it's a good idea to go? Don't you think it's a good idea to go? And then it just starts Don't over. Don't you think it is a good idea to go? Don't you think it's a good idea to go? Don't you think it's a good idea to go? Don't you think it's a good idea to go? <laughs> Don't you think it's a good idea to go? It's kind of like a tongue twister. Don't you think it's a good idea to go? Don't you think it's a good idea to go? And you can hear the tone, the inflection, the all those things that I'm using. Um, hopefully, this is helpful for you. Let me see if there are any questions. I hear um, one person says, I hear a little R on the that I in the other phrase, which was the other phrase. Did you know that I? Did you know that I? You could maybe hear different sounds each time I say it, to be honest with you, because even as a native speaker, we are not totally aware of everything, every sound we're making. Another question. Let me see. Could you explain what a chunk is? This is a chunk. The way I've been teaching you today is with chunks. When I said, did you what was the phrase I said? Did you, what did you think of that book? What did you is a chunk. What did you is a chunk. What did you? It just means this is a chunk of broccoli. This is a very small chunk of broccoli that SB loves these little chunks. 
And that's what we mean when we're talking about chunks in learning language. Instead of doing a whole sentence, we take a chunk of the sentence. Instead of giving her all of the broccoli, I give her a chunk of broccoli. Such a great question, Alex. Thank you. I'm going to see if I missed any um, questions. Mariana said, when I say of, it sounds like of with a V. That's very, very common. Good job listening. Um, Monica has a good question. Is it difficult for you to speak so slowly? Is it weird for me? It's not weird for me because like I was um, explaining earlier, we naturally speak differently with different people and in different situations. You do this too in your native language. You, If you are intermediate to advanced, you're starting to already do it in English or whatever your second and third language is. This is something we do naturally. We aren't as aware of it um, because I've been teaching for a long, long time. It's totally natural for me. It wasn't difficult for me in the beginning because I tend to speak slowly with new people. Um, different people speak differently. I don't know if that answered your question, but hopefully it did. And let's see if I missed any others. I think I got most of the questions, but I know after all of my lives, I always see questions that are great questions. So I would encourage you if I didn't get to answer your question, please go put it on the recorded version of this, um, of this video. Uh, and if there were things that are helpful for you, it's really helpful for me if you tell me what was helpful about this. What did we do here that was helpful and what could be helpful? That's very helpful for me. Um, and we're getting close to the end of well, we're just past the middle of March, so we're starting to think about enrollment for WSB, our Women Speak Better program. If you're looking for a program where you want to learn to speak better, speak more quickly, speak in person, have, in, uh, not in person, on Zoom, I should say, live Zoom classes with me, I hope you will check that out. You can leave questions about it below. You can email me, which my email is in the description below, or you can go to our website, which is www.englishcoach3ts.com. It does have a little hyphen, but if you uh, Google English Coach 3Ts, you will find it. All right, everyone. Thank you for being here with me. I'm going to have to rename this. <laughs> Instead of 10 to 20, I'm going to have to start calling it 10 to 30 because um, these lessons take a while to get finished. I hope you learn something helpful, um, share this information with your friends if you think it will help, help them. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye-bye.